Hello. I'm going to try and explain the difference between the preterite and the imperfect in Spanish, making reference to the linguistic concept of aspect. Aspect um, represents this um, distinction between the different ways of looking at an, a, a situation, at how a situation evolves in time. If you use an imperfective aspect, you are viewing at that situation just as having some kind of internal complexity. For instance, the action of going through the door, Juan salía de casa. It makes me think of uh, the moment Juan puts his hand to the handle, opens the door a little bit and further, gradually opens the door, then steps through the door, closes the door perhaps, and goes out of the house. So it makes me think of all those stages by using the imperfect, Imperfectivity conveys all that complexity that comes with the action of going out of the house. If I say, Juan salió de casa, I'm not thinking of that at all. I'm thinking of uh, the action in its totality, going out of the house in one go, without mm, implying that there's some kind of eventual uh, structure to it. So I can say, Juan salió de casa, Salió a la calle, cruzó la calle, entró a comprar el pan. So I'm referring to a series of short events, and I'm not thinking as a speaker, or I'm not perceiving as a listener, any kind of internal complexity that I need to worry about, about one of these situations. They are points in time, events that succeed each other. Now I'm going to show you a slide that I've adapted from Cumbri and I modified by looking at the proposal in the Gramática de la Lengua de la Real Academia. You will see the main division between perfective and imperfective, and the correspondence between Spanish and English. I've written the Spanish examples in green, so you can see how this corresponds. Have a look at it, as you will see, the perfective in English, you only have one form to express that, although the perfective meaning is there. Juan trabajó aquí. Juan worked here. And you can say as well, you can elaborate on this example by saying, Juan trabajó de barrendero, después de conductor, después de taxista, finalmente trabajó de maestro. See, I'm referring to a series of events in Juan's working life. The problem here is that you would use exactly the same verbal form for the perfective, for the imperfective in English. But by looking at this slide, you will see how this map out. Look at the imperfective and see how it divides itself into three categories, from left to right, habitual, progressive, and continuous. The first two, habitual and progressive, correspond very closely to English and there's no problem here at all. See? It, it, the meaning is, John used to do X. John used to work here. Juan solía trabajar aquí. In Spanish, when I can say Juan solía trabajar aquí, I can use the imperfect. I can say Juan trabajaba aquí without changing meaning. The same applies to the progressive. John was working here. So I can say the same in Spanish. Juan trabajaba aquí. Juan estaba trabajando aquí, see? ¿sí? If I can say, Juan estaba trabajando aquí, John was working here, then I can use the imperfect. Juan trabajaba aquí. There's no problem. It corresponds exactly to the English. The third category presents some more complexity because um, you don't have it in English in the same way. So that's the category, the continuous, that used to describe states and situations. Using the example of Juan, I can say, Juan era joven, tenía talento, tenía ambición. By looking at this last category, you can see why most grammar books use the example of the background to describe the situations where you would use the imperfect, where the imperfect would be required. So to continue with the example of Juan, I can say, Juan era joven, Juan tenía talento, Juan tenía mucha ambición. Vivía en un pueblecito de la provincia de Huelva, pero se mudó a Madrid. 
So that would be the idea. So John, John had talent, ambition. He was young and he went to London, for instance, if we translate it to an English context. So using the imperfect, I said the things that are uh, part of his personality or circumstances, using the continuous aspect. I can add something that habitual as well, he, things that he used to do or things that uh, he was doing. But then when I want to narrate, when I want to refer to specific actions that end and finish, and I don't care much about um, how long or how complex they are, things that he did in succession, think of something that he did, he did in quick succession. Fue a Londres, trabajó de barrendero, trabajó de conductor, trabajó de etc. Then I move on to the perfective. Therefore, by thinking in terms of aspect and by carefully comparing the Spanish with the English, you can see how the preterite and the imperfect work. So we have seen how the distinction between the preterite and the imperfect corresponds to the distinction of aspect between something that's perfective, that's the preterite, and something that's imperfective, that's the imperfect. And we have seen that at least two cases are very clear, very clear-cut, and there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, Spanish and English. And that's the cases of habituality, he used to, and that requires the imperfect, or progression, he was doing something, and that requires the imperfect as well in the Spanish. For the other two, for the continuous, you have to think a little bit, and for the preterite, remember the concept of an action that just happens, an event, without uh, implications that you care about uh, the length or the complexity or the beginning of an end, something that happens quickly, an event, an event, an event, okay? So that's everything for today. Thanks for your attention.